So yesterday, guys, Max Verstappen and Red Bull, or in the Belgian Grand Prix, um, were so dominant over Ferrari. They were so much quicker than the Ferrari team, at times two to three seconds a lap quicker. And not just that in the race, but they were way quicker in qualifying as well. So what I'm going to get into in this video is why were Red Bull so much quicker than Ferrari? Because even though I expected Red Bull to be quicker than Ferrari, uh, compared to uh, yeah, compared to Ferrari here at Spa, I didn't expect it to be such a massive difference between the two teams. So let's get into it, and we'll start by getting into just how qualifying and the race happened, and then we'll get into uh, the respective data in terms of the pace difference, especially in the race between. Verstappen and the highest placed Ferrari driver in the Grand Prix, Carlos Sainz. So in qualifying, Max Verstappen, even though he had to start eventually 13th on the grid because of a new ERS and uh, power unit pretty much taken on for the Grand Prix, he, qu he uh, finished up in first place, six and a half tenths of a second, amazingly quicker than Carlos Sainz in what was a massive gap, again, compared to what we expected it to be in qualifying. And starting from 13th, because of just how quick he was in the qualifying session on Saturday, there was a big fear from Ferrari and even quite a big expectation that Max Verstappen was not only still going to compete for the victory on the Sunday, but was probably going to win the race on the Sunday, even though, again, he was starting from P13. So let's now get into just how, in the race, he was able to go from 13th all the way up to first position. So, obviously, on the first lap, these two collided, and Lewis Hamilton was put out of the Grand Prix, so that obviously was one position he gained on the first lap. Had a good start and got his way, I think, up to uh, P9 before Lewis Hamilton eventually pulled off uh, the racing line and pulled out of the Grand Prix. And when the safety car... Uh, came back in. Max Verstappen was in a very good position because not only was he in eighth place, but because of the safety car obviously closing the pack up, it meant that once he quickly got through the midfield cars, such as I think Aston Martin of Sebastian Vettel and the Alpine of Fernando uh, Alonso, he was now not too far off the lead, only about four to five seconds off the lead. When if there had not been, been a safety car, may have been a slightly bigger gap. So that definitely did help Max Verstappen. But um, he still obviously had incredible pace as he found his way up in the top three by, I think it was lap eight or lap seven of the Grand Prix. And then eventually, uh, once Carlos Sainz, uh, who started on the soft compound tyres, same with Max Verstappen, by the way, who also started on the soft compound tyres. Once Carlos pitted, uh, which was, you know, his first pit stop was a few laps before Max, Verstappen impressively and very quickly disposed of his teammate Sergio Perez, even though Verstappen's tyres were definitely wearing out more so than Perez's, but Max's pace was absolutely incredible compared to Sergio Perez, because once he overtook him... He pulled out, I think, a three or four second lead over Perez. And once Perez made his pit stop, which was before Max's, Max still came out ahead of Perez when he exited the pit lane from his first pit stop. So incredible pace from the Red Bull of Max Verstappen. But let's just quickly look at what the, the average lap times were between Max Verstappen and Carlos Sainz in that first stint. So... In the first stint, uh, the average lap time for Max Verstappen was a 153.5. For Carlos Sainz, who led, um, or in his first stint, was leading the race and had no um, dirty air from any cars ahead, was doing a 153.4. Now, even though, yes, Carlos was quicker, very impressive by Max that he was basically on the same pace, despite having to overtake a few cars and run in the dirty air of his teammate for a few laps as well. So Max was, I think, already quite clearly quicker than Carlos by the time, um, you know, Carlos made his first pit stop. Because once Max had cleared a few of the midfield cars, 
Max was going considerably quicker, even though, again, they started on the same compound of tyre. And really, because of how quickly Max you know, fought his way up the field, once Verstappen made his pit stop a few laps after Carlos Sainz, sadly for Sainz and Ferrari, it was, well, quite inevitable that he was going to be overtaken by Verstappen because of the fresher tyres and the pace difference between Verstappen and Sainz yesterday and just for the weekend in general. You can see here, uh, this is Max, um, I think, after about a lap and a half after his pit stop and already was climbing all over the back of the Spaniard. And then he overtook him very easily, as you can see here, into Le Coombe. And Carlos Sainz would not see the back of Max Verstappen again until um, the chequered flag. So, yeah, an incredibly quick move up to first place. I believe this uh, overtake for the lead was made on lap 16, 17, or maybe even lap 18. I can't remember exactly, but... Again, incredible how quick he was able to get into the lead of the race. Not even, um, we weren't even at half race distance yet. So incredible pace there from Verstappen. But let's get into the pace difference between Verstappen and Sainz in the second stint, which is really what lost Ferrari and Carlos Sainz the Grand Prix. And we'll get into, of course, like I did with the first stint, the average lap time difference between Max Verstappen and and Carlos Sainz, and you're going to be amazed by just the pay, uh, pace difference between the two cars. Max Verstappen's average lap time in the second stint was a 152.2. Carlos Sainz's average lap time in the second stint was a 153.7. Yes, on average in that second stint, Max Verstappen was 1.5 seconds quicker in that stint and at times on certain laps was two 2.5 seconds quicker i know max was on fresher tires which of course it does give you maybe an extra few tenths of a second and the red bull was quicker but this type of pace difference between these two cars that have been pretty equal this season should not really be a thing and it was amazing to see during the grand prix Carlos not only was losing so much time per lap, he was losing, at best, one second a lap in the middle sector alone. And we'll get into exactly why that was um, in a moment with some analysis from Auto, Motor and Sport, um, a great publication in the Formula One world that analysed just why were Ferrari and Mercedes so much slower compared to Red Bull, why were Red Bull so dominant um, at Spa. Uh, but even... Um, and actually, before we get into the third and final stint of the Grand Prix and the difference in average lap time, if we look at Carlos Sainz, again, 153.7 on average for his uh, average lap time in the second stint. In the first stint, he was actually, on average, three tenths of a second quicker, which doesn't make any sense because normally in a Grand Prix, uh, with the fuel load coming down, the track rubbering in more, and, you know, that means more grip... And with Sainz on the medium tie for his second stint, which would have had more grip for longer. And I think was just a better tyre yesterday in the Grand Prix than the soft. I think that was pretty clear to see. Carlos should have been going at least half a second quicker on average compared to his first stint. So should have been really in the 152s. But he was, again, three tenths of a second slower on average than his first stint. Showing that the Ferrari was absolutely killing its tyres. Sainz's tyres really were gone after about four or five laps in that uh, second stint. And even in the final stint, um, his tyres were pretty finished after a few laps and couldn't really um, go that much quicker. And let's get into that final stint, just the pace difference between Max and Sainz. So Max Verstappen, he would improve his pace in the uh, third stint. His average lap time was a 151.6. Carlos's pace improved quite a bit. And I think Carlos was on the hard compound tyre. So maybe in hindsight, um, Ferrari should have gone to the hard compound tyre for his uh, second stint. But even if he did, I don't think it, were, it really would have made that big of a difference. And yeah, he was uh, on average in the final stint, eight tenths of a second slower for Max Verstappen, 
The thing is, though, the most insulting thing for Ferrari is that Verstappen, if you go look at the final 10 laps or so of that race, Verstappen wasn't pushing. He was just coasting to the end, just trying to keep the car going, of course, and not have any reliability failures uh, by you know pushing the car too hard. And we're still, on average, eight tenths of a second quicker than Carlos Sainz. And um, yeah, I think the fastest lap difference as well between uh, the Red Bull of Verstappen and the Ferrari of Sainz. I think Verstappen's fastest lap was a 149.3 and Carlos's fastest lap of the entire Grand Prix was a 151.9. That is... 2.6 seconds difference and when max set his fastest lap of the race it wasn't like it was on the soft compound tire at the very end of the grand prix just to get the fastest lap verstappen was i think two or three laps into a medium compound tire stint when carlos was on i think the hard compound tire i think a few laps into his stint as well so just shows you the incredible difference between the two cars yesterday in the grand prix but just why was it so big, this gap? Well, let's get into that analysis by uh, Automotor and Sport and just looking at why Red Bull was so dominant compared to Ferrari. So this is what their analysis was. It said, quote, uh, Red Bull's exceptional superiority has a lot to do with the circuit, not just because spa franc shock demands more efficiency from the car than any other circuit, you need top speed in sectors one and three. Obviously, we know the Red Bull in a straight line is so, so quick and was always going to be very quick in those sectors. Um, and downforce in the middle section, it says, with its 10 corners, nobody manages this balancing act better than the Red Bull because the RB18 generates more downforce via the underbody than any other car in the field. Therefore, doesn't put as much wing into the wind. Uh, they go on to say, but that's only half the benefit. Spa is a special case in terms of the car height due to the compression in Eau Rouge and a nasty bump in the Stavolo corners. In order to alleviate the impact at these points, the teams have to set their cars five to six millimeters higher than usual. This would have happened. This is very important to remember in terms of the new technical directive. This would have happened, they say, even without the technical directive, which many teams had hoped could become a stumbling block for Red Bull and Ferrari. So if that is indeed the case, then we haven't really seen the effects of the technical directive as of yet. And we probably will this weekend in Holland for the Dutch Grand Prix at Zandvoort. And then they finally go on to say, in fact, this time the ground clearance had to be increased by a bit more than the engineers had calculated. This was due to the ominous bump between turns 14 and 15, which is, yeah, I think that's in between the two Stavolo corners, I'm pretty sure. Um, and then it goes on to say, this put Ferrari and Mercedes in a window in which their aerodynamics no longer delivered the downforce that they were used to. As a consequence, both teams had to trim the chassis harder than usual, uh, which also cost mechanical grip. And that's why, a uh, big reason, I think, why Ferrari were so slow in the middle sector yesterday compared to Red Bull. And then it goes on to say, the Red Bull felt comfortable with more ground clearance and therefore also reached its normal form. And yeah, credit to Automotor and Sport. Um, a great publication when it comes to Formula 1. Probably the best out there, I'd say. So if you are uh, German, you absolutely have to be, um, you know, reading what they have to say. And even if you're, you know, English speaking or from whatever um other country that speaks a different language than german if you're able to um to translate their um articles into the language you do speak then make sure to check out their stuff because their stuff is absolutely top quality but because as they say of the um the alterations that ferrari had to make to their car that's what uh, caused them to be not just in the race but in qualifying as well so slow compared to Red Bull in the middle sector where a lot of us were expecting the Ferrari to really come alive in that middle sector but it just never happened um, and because um, I think that aer uh, aerodynamics uh, and mechanical you know, obviously they weren't well, they didn't have as much mechanical grip as they had previously that wasn't helping with looking after the tyres also which is really another reason what hurt Ferrari yesterday but 
we also do have to credit Max Verstappen, who put in an amazing drive at Spa. And it was maybe not the best drive of his career because of how easy it was and how quick the Red Bull was, but definitely it was one of his best. We'll see this weekend at his home Grand Prix at Zandvoort whether he can continue this, and it'll be very interesting to see whether Red Bull keep this pace up compared to Ferrari um, compared to Ferrari this weekend at Zandvoort. What effect as well the technical directive has, and it should have definitely more of an effect at Zandvoort rather than last weekend at Spa. So we'll see what happens with that, but those are the reasons why Red Bull absolutely destroyed Ferrari during the 2022 Belgian Grand Prix.